do an oil change today. I'm doing something a little bit different. I usually drive them up on the ramps, but every time I back them off, I have them too far in. Then when I come down, I come down on these on these um, running boards. You see, I cracked them. Every all the damage I do to my bike, I do in the stupid garage. So this time, I jacked them up. I used my bought this really nice floor jack a while ago, and it's, it gets underneath the frame and does a good job. Then I use this other little jack I have, and I jack it up underneath with the uh, you know the framework for the running boards. But anyway, I thought I might record this a little bit. I don't know where my light go. I know I brought a light down here. Now I forgot what I did with it. Oh, there it is. I'm going to put a... Uh, see if I'll get it. I'll put the GoPro down here. Hopefully I can get it. Let's see if I get it at an angle. Here we go. But here's the... Uh, here's the drain plug right here. Here's the filter. Hopefully you can see it. Let me get the light over here. There's the drain plug and there's the filter. Pretty easy to do, but you got to get the trike up in the air just because it's a, it's got these running boards, so it's a mess. Ooh, I should put on my. There we go. These are not the best gloves, but they work. Let's see if I don't want the oil to go all over the floor again. So I got this pan underneath, and I uh, emptied it out into the. Uh, I didn't start the motor first and warm it up, but not a big deal. I'll just let it drip for a while. Yeah, I should get some paper towels to set my little thing on. Anyway, I'll let that drain. And get me some paper towels. Here, I put my little plug on the paper towel so I don't get my floor all greasy. And now I have a little uh, where to go? A little wrench that fits really nice, and I put it over the filter and pull the filter off. I just use the same socket. I got to put it on first. When I put it on, there's a oh, there's I don't know if you can see it. Let's see if I move this up here. I don't know if you can see this, but see this um, cable for the uh, oh, I think it's the the foot warmers. But that's in the way, so I gotta push that off to the side and then put that thing on there. And I can't undo it all the way because then I have to do it with my, my finger because then I won't get that little socket thing off. So anyway, hopefully I can still get it. But let me move this to the side. That's the only way to get that on there. It's a pain in the butt, but here's the socket. Yeah, I should there we go. Here we go. So I just loosen it just a little bit. Then I pull this back off. Yeah. Probably didn't get it on real good. Sometimes it could be a little pain. Gotta, there we go. Knock it and loosen it. And then I take that back off again. You can see it's kind of a pill to get that. There we go. Now I can loosen this with my finger. Oh, and one thing I forgot to do, it runs down this pipe. So what I've learned is to wrap this frame in a paper towel and then it stops it because it'll run down this frame on this running board and drip all the way on the floor so I put that on there I think I'm only like 4,000 miles but I like to change mine at 4,000 miles just because it I want it to last a really long time I have 40 almost 47,000 miles on it already yeah stupid things in the way here we go There we go. Now just let that drain for a while because I, I didn't warm it up. Got to clean my hands so I can turn that GoPro off. And I'll let that drain and I'll come back in a little bit. 
you see it draining and what you always want to do is I learned this years ago when I was in high school in the cars where that let me get the light back up there if you see where that that uh, oil seal goes you want to clean that really well with the paper towel so I, I learned that years ago because it gets gunk and then it won't get a good seal so I cleaned that with a paper towel then what I've also been doing is using good clean oil and I fill up the oil filter quite a bit because it soaks in I don't fill it up all the way then I put it back on that way when you start the motor it uh, doesn't have to pump you know pump oil into that filter a whole lot and and you know kind of run a little little lean on the oil so anyway that's what I do so I'll turn it back on a little bit bye okay this is my favorite oil to run in the bike it's Rotella T6 full synthetic it's 5w40 I have used um, mobile one uh, 10w40 and it's okay but but bike runs the quietest with 5w40 and I get the best mileage with the 5w40 my wife's Cadillac calls for 5w40 as well and it gets pretty decent mileage so this is the oil I always run here's the filters OEM filters I buy on to online all the time they're like uh, five for 35 bucks off of Amazon and I buy these all the boxes fell on my head my wife gets cake boxes up there she cuts up and they're not stacked we run I just tossed them all in the back but anyway this is the oil I use this is the OEM filter I'll buy, and I'll fill that up full of oil before I put it back in. Anyway, a little bit later. Bye. What I always want to do, I know most of you already know this, but you want to put some fresh oil around that O-ring and get a good seal once you put it on, too. So I'll put some more oil in there and then put it back on. That way it doesn't have to pump it full before when I start it up and, and run it for the first time after an oil change. So I'll put a little more in. Bye. One other thing. I bought a whole bag of these o-rings or these uh, crush rings crush washers and I've never had to replace one I have a whole bag that I never use because these things really don't crush and if they do I guess I put another one in but those you know those crush washers are are not bad they're not crushing so I really don't need to change them and I got a whole bag so I guess you could just buy one or two over the years and replace them if they need it but I've never had to replace them anyway I'm gonna put the uh, what I also do is clean the where the drain plug goes I clean that with a paper towel as well to get the so I can get a good seal and not get a gunky seal so I've already done that I've already put um, um, oil around the o-ring so I'll put that back in, in a minute if I can do this I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it hopefully I can get my arms in the way but I'm gonna put this oil filter back on Sometimes it's hard to get it started. I'll put that on first. Get that stupid thing out of the way. There we go. Yep. It can be hard to do sometimes. It sometimes it takes me a while to get it. It helps to put. Uh, some oil around the thread sometimes. Started. I had to put the drain plug in a little bit to stop it from dripping but I got it started so I'll finger tight it and then I'll put the little wrench on and snug it up a little bit and then I'll, I'll snug up the uh, the uh, drain plug and that's it and then I'll put some new oil in it so I don't know if I'll leave this run I killed well I could probably scoot this around, around the side now. Oops sorry so now should be able to see now because I moved the oil. But anyway, let me uh snug this up. I don't really torque it, I just uh don't over tighten it, but I guess I don't really torque it, it's just kind of a pain. But I just snug it up and crushed them washer just a hair and that's all I do then I'll snug this up with my finger it's kind of hard to get out I hate that foot warmer cable that's in the way it's a pain but I do more than snug it with just my finger tight because I can't get my fingers in there you see all this crap in the way these are the braces for the 
the running boards and they're kind of in the way so I snug it up the best I can with my finger and I'll put this back on there and the socket and I can get the hole snug it up just a not a whole lot just enough to crush the uh, rubber washer and then I pull it off and then that's it oil change is done I wipe it down a little bit and get some of the oil off there pull my little paper towel also didn't run down the, the the oil runs down oil runs down this and gets on the floor which is pain in the butt but all cleaned up and I put new oil in it, and that's it. I, I used uh, uh, four gallons. I put four gallons exact. That's all you need. You don't have to measure out 3.9. Just put four gallons in it. You're not gonna, you're not gonna ruin it. Anyway, sorry, I said gallons, which four quarts. It's just one gallon. I use this T6, and it's perfectly one gallon. So you really want to just put one gallon of oil in it, and that's what I do. Let's see if you can see it. I just dump. Use it. Use this to put it in. And I put the whole thing in. It calls for 3.9, but now a tenth of a quart. Come on. I love this oil. My bike runs the best on this 5W40. And it's just uh, always been a really good oil. It's actually for diesels, but it's the thing you want to look at when you buy oil is this label right there. You don't want any additives. The stuff on the the info on the top is good, but you don't want any info on the bottom because then it's got kind of some funky additives. So I always make sure I look at that label. And T6 is good, so that's what I use. I guess you don't really want to watch me dump the oil in, right? Not turn it off. All done with the oil change. Now what I'm going to do, since I already have it up, there's a grease zerd in here for my drive shaft, and there's another one in the back, and I'm going to show you how I do that too. Anyway, in a minute, but I get to get the light first. Have to put the bike in neutral so that drive shaft spins, and I turn the wheel a little bit. But if you look, if I can hold the light in, here, see that little green? I don't know if you can see it. It's a green drive shaft and it's a u-joint inside there so i have to turn it oh, let's see if i can hold the light so i have to turn it so i can get to it there it is right there see it you can see if I get the light in there without i won't, probably won't be able to do both there you can see that little grease cert so i need to get it right down here if I can keep that light just right. There, that might help. Get it right down there. Oh, the other way. Right there. So now I can get the I get to it and I stick I grease a couple little shots of grease in there. Get about four shots of grease, and I do this every oil change. So every four thousand miles I'm greasing these U-joints. And there's another one underneath, and I'll crawl underneath there and show you that one too. In a, in a minute bye okay. there's the other one so i always grease that one too what the hell i got boxes falling on me again i always grease that one too i don't know if i'll be able to be able to see it yep i always grease that one give that a couple shots too there we go I probably overdo it, but hey, I do it every 4,000 miles, and uh, every time I change the oil, I'll grease that. There we go. I grease that U-joint. And they're pretty easy to get to. You just got to get the, the trike up in the air. Since I have a trike, it's a lot harder. Well, I guess if you had a trike, you'd have that same drive shaft. But anyway, that's what I grease. And then I do it every oil change so it 
makes a big difference. I kind of do my all, all my own maintenance. So hopefully I won't have any problems down the road. Anyway, bye. Well, I checked my book and uh, apparently I went 4,500 miles instead of 4,000 miles. That big trip I took on uh, Wednesday, I actually went uh, 4,500 miles. So that's still good. Um, I like to change it at four, but I went a little over. But anyway, that was, uh, um, oh, it was uh, Mobile One 10W40 synthetic. I've always put synthetic in it since I started changing oil myself when it was new. Anyway, bye.